you know, just what can you say? Proud of our team. Uh, we had a couple of unbelievable days of preparation. Our guys are in a great place. Uh, we beat as well a coach team with Conzo's team, team that's playing, you know, like you said, they're top ten in America, and they, they're deserving of all the wins that they've had. They've been a great road team. Thought the big key, you know, we out-rebounded them by 15. 21 assists was terrific. Uh, we found a different way to win tonight, too. You know, when Romella was just spectacular Saturday, well, he just fought foul trouble, never really got any kind of rhythm, and, and we found a way to, to play. I thought Sammy and KJ were really, really good. Robert gave us great effort. And, uh, you know, Jarkel was, was, was really, really good tonight. So it was – we ran good offense, beat a great team. Uh, so, I mean, obviously we feel good and got to turn our attention to South Carolina tomorrow. Tyler starts off. Coach, can you give me one word to describe what the locker room was like after the blowout one? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think just, just happy. You know, it wasn't maybe like a couple of other ones. I, I think that – that winning is good, that they felt really good about how they played. But it wasn't just, I guess, because of maybe the margin of victory, the jubilation, but, but they're very proud of their effort. They're very, very proud of, of how they prepared and they put some things into the game that we talked about as a staff. So that, that was good. Ben, go ahead. Herman, um, you had your concerns, but coming into this season, you really liked your team. Is this over this last span of eight days more of what you thought they were going to look like? It has been. You know, if we can just make a – a few threes, you know, and made eight of them tonight. And, and you know, we've, all, we've always, you know, been a team that's tried to guard. We haven't been perfect in that area either at times. But, you know, just where you keep, you just keep going and keep scoring. And it was a high-scoring first half. And when we can do that, you know, then, then our, our team, we think, can play with anybody. So, you know, we're playing well at the right time, a lot of basketball ahead. But, but it is, Ben. It's, it's kind of a, starting to look like the team that we envisioned. In KJ, I mean, everything's been dealing with to come off the bench and play in, in place of Ramillo and to play like he did with the energy and also just big play steals and all kinds of stuff. I mean, just a number of different high winning plays. I mean, what did you think of him and, and how he responded to everything? Yeah, you know, we're all just pulling for KJ. He's got such a great heart. We've known him for a long time. And, uh, and he's had his two best days of practice, so you knew it was coming. You knew he's got, I just knew he was going to play well. And he did. I thought he was just well-rounded from rebounding, playmaking, steals, scoring. He, he just did everything tonight. He, he guarded his tail off. He switched some four ball screens and guarded their perimeter, which they're a hard guard for a guy his size. So he, he, was, he was really good tonight. Go to Courtney. Coach, when you look at one of your more higher scoring games that we've seen in conference play, but also with the defense that we've kind of gotten used to seeing, did you feel like this was your most well-balanced game that your team has played in conference play this year? And how do you kind of sustain that going forward? It, it was. There's no question about that. When you rebound the ball, how the ball moved, 21 assists, defensively holding a really good offensive team to 59, it was the best we played in all the areas uh, for 40 minutes, no question. And then how do you kind of keep that going forward? And how do you get your team to recognize tonight is what you want to see from them for the rest of the year? You know, we, we will watch the tape. We, we watch a lot of tape, you know, with our guys. And we'll watch it tomorrow at 2.30. And, and again, like I always said, it's just back to preparation of practice. And uh, that's why I never gave up hope with our team because they're always a good team to come to the gym with. We just had our struggles in some offensive areas. Uh, but just get right back to basics and – uh, tomorrow and and I, and I think too you know the last even the last couple of weeks been a lot more cognizant of mental fatigue physical fatigue and how we're handling our guys on the court the time the physical things so we'll have to re those things I think really really matter starting in the middle of Mar in the middle of February thank you Adam go ahead coach just come out the uh end of the first half to the uh sort of second half can you talk about that little transitional run that y'all had? Yeah, we thought that was a critical part. Uh, you know, got up five, uh, you know, and Jarkel missed it. We thought the first four minutes, it, it is all the time. I know it's coaches' cliches, but especially against Missouri, they've been fast starting. And, uh, and I thought our team got out in transition. We really guarded well then. We got our hands on balls, got out in transition, made some really good plays in the break. Uh, like I said, just, you know, created offense for others, which was great to see. You'll go ahead. 
Hey, Carmen, kind of two questions. One big picture, one sort of small picture. I'll start with the small picture. You talked about Romello getting in foul trouble early. How critical were those moments for those minutes for Sammy, the last seven or eight minutes of the first half? Yeah, I mean, Sammy's just – he's really – He's really starting to be better, you know, just maturing. And, and the thing we've got to remember with Sam, I was just telling Keith, you know, he's, with the COVID year, he's really a freshman. Uh, he's a guy that can pick and pop. You know, Sammy plays with great length, you know. And so I thought the follow-up dunk, and he made a 15-footer on pick and pop. Uh, I, I thought he really showed his length and presence. It was it was huge, Neil, and huge for us down the stretch that, you know, we get a guy like Sammy to come around and start playing with confidence. Good for him. You guys didn't play well in Fayetteville. I mean, you followed that up with a kind of a lackluster effort at, at, in, in Athens. Since then, you guys have played really well. Was there something that you can point back to to sort of say this was a, a turning point? You know, I don't know. We, we spent a lot of time with our team individually and in groups after Georgia. And it wasn't so much we went out and, you know, and hammered them physically. We did some toughness things. We went with three-hour practices. Did probably more mental stuff and, and with gathering our team. And we still knew, and but we practiced good, Neil. And, but, you know, it was just, I think it's just having success. And when you beat a team like Tennessee, and everybody in the country knows how good they are, our players know. It just gave them that confidence, Neil, like, you know, we do belong. You know, we can close these games out. We close it out against a really tough team. And I, and I think that really, really, from a confidence standpoint, helped us a bunch. You got a TJ? Hey, Coach, uh, was there anything that you did adjustment-wise to kind of slow down some of the playmakers from Missouri? I believe uh, Drew Smith was like one of six early in the first half and then Pitts had a couple turnovers. Yeah, you know, just, you know, we, we've guarded them. They know us real well. We know Missouri real well. Uh, those three guards are elite. The biggest thing is, is transition. We, did, we didn't give up many buckets in fast break points. I think they, uh, Missouri got zero. So that's what I mean. You watch them play. They are so fast in transition. So the biggest thing is you got to make them run half-court offense. And we did that. And uh, yeah, I just thought we stayed in front. I thought our ball screen defense was better. Our switch, we had some timely switching that was good. And, uh, but the biggest thing is just getting back and not let those guys play downhill in the break. Go back to Ben. Yeah, Carmen, Devontae talked about his leadership throughout this process. And um, I was just curious if you've seen a different type of um, just determination with this group or just – Ernest is knowing that it's the end of the season, that they're going to make a push. You see a change in them as far as it's got to be now? Yeah, I mean, and I think Devontae's a big part of that. Uh, I hear his voice more on the sideline. Like, he's not a real – he's not going to be a rah-rah guy. He never will. But you can just tell, boy, is his, his voice with, with talking to players on the sideline, where he's maybe out communicating, scouting information on the floor, all those kind of things that mature senior guards do. So that, that's, that's, that's a big plus for him. He's really helping our team in that area. Any more questions for Coach? All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.